Hey there guys, I am Sonic Ghost, and welcome to another bonus episode of Let's Play Banjo-Tooie. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the replay mode here in Banjo-Tooie. This is a mode where you can go ahead and play the mini games, the boss fights, and the cutscenes again without having to replay Banjo-Tooie over and over again. This is a very interesting feature, and it's something I'm very fond of in this game, because it's a very fun way to challenge yourself in some of these regards. Let's go ahead and just jump into the game and take a look at this replay mode in general. So, over here on the table on your file select screen, you might have noticed this little radio looking device down here. This is the replay mode, so you have three different options here. Mini games, bosses, and cinema. So, each one of these is a different thing we can go ahead and play. So let's go ahead and start off with the mini games here first. So these are all the mini games in Banjo-Tooie. And these unlock as you're playing the main game. So, at first, either on your cartridge of Banjo-Tooie or on your file for the Xbox 360 version, this will basically be blank. There'll be nothing here at all. And you get more of this the more you play the game. So, let's just go ahead and play one of these. So, let's say we play... How about the first mini game in Banjo-Tooie? Let's do one of the kickball challenges here. Let's go ahead and jump into the My Hand Kickball Tournament here. And just go ahead and play like a quick round here. So one thing I actually didn't mention about this minigame when we were originally playing is that if you hold down the triggers, you can actually kick your ball farther. This is actually a mechanic I completely forgot about in Banjo-Tooie because the game doesn't really tell you this per se. They do tell you you can just press the Z button or the triggers on the 360 version to shoot these balls, but they don't say if you hold it in, you'll get a stronger kick. So I kind of forgot all about this mechanic in the game, and this is actually a huge deal because you can make shots from all the way across the field. So this is a very useful thing to note. But this is just basically the same thing we played in the main game of Banjo-Tooie, except now we can play this game whenever we want. So there's no reward we get from this. We just play this until we feel content, and that's pretty much it. So, that's the mini games. I'm not going to play any more here because you kind of get the gist. You don't unlock anything for playing all the mini games here in the replay mode. But if you want to go ahead and practice one of these games for next time you're playing the main game of Banjo Tooie, say if you're struggling on something like the Ornich Storage mini game to get that one jiggy, you can go ahead and play it here in the mini game challenge. And this will give you some extra flexibility as you don't have to worry about redoing this whole segment over and over again with a limited supply of items. Every time you start one of these games, you're going to be maxed out on your health, your eggs, all that. But that's the mini games. Now let's go ahead and jump into bosses here. Notice how next to the word bosses, I have a time next to it and it says how many boss fights I played here. This is something they changed about the 360 version of Banjo-Tooie. So in the bosses here, we can go ahead and rematch every single boss fight in the game and we're not going to fight them all, but I'm actually going to fight a few bosses here just to kind of show you how this mode works. So let's go ahead and do the first clunk go fight here in Banjo-Tooie. So here we go. It's time for us to fight our good old friend Klungo once again. Now we haven't fought Klungo in this state since the very beginning of our adventure here in Banjo-Tooie. So if you remember how the Klungo fight goes... He starts off drinking a potion, and he has a choice of one or three potions, and it'll be random every time. A potion that'll make him big, a potion that'll multiply him, and a potion that can make him invisible. But every time I have fought Klungo here in this replay mode, he always starts his fight out drinking the red potion, increasing his size. So because of this, this is very easy to figure out his pattern, which is good, because now that we're getting past all these cutscenes, you're going to notice a timer appear in the top right hand corner of the screen. In the N64 version of Banjo-Tooie, this mode did not time you with how fast you can go ahead and beat these bosses. But in the Xbox 360 version, they have added a time attack mode here inside these boss fights. So whenever you fight a boss in the replay mode here, it is the time attack version of these fights. So I am believing for all the Klungo fights, they script out what potion he starts with now, so you can actually improve your time every single time you replay this fight. But there you go, Klungo is now defeated, 
And that was a pretty easy fight. Out of the three potions he's drinking, the red potion is probably the easiest to deal with, as it's extremely easy to hit Klungo as soon as he grows in size. So this fight is very easy to grind out a very fast time because of that. But now that we beat Klungo, we are kicked out of the boss fight, returning back to the menus here. And as you can see now next to Klungo's name, we have a time of 2240. So now, we're just going to go ahead and fight a select few bosses here in the game. We're going to be mainly fighting bosses that we're going to show different fighting strategies against, compared to how I fought them in the actual Let's Play here. So, starting off, we're going to go ahead and rematch Old King Cole, because he actually has a weakness that we didn't show off in our first encounter. King Cole is actually weak to Ice Eggs. We did not have Ice Eggs when we first encountered King Cole, so... In the replay mode, we have access to all of our egg types, and because of this, we can just see how much damage the ice eggs can do to King Cole. So, one ice egg will do 5 points of damage, which is insane. This is the most damage that you will do to King Cole. This is even more than grenade eggs. So, if you want to beat this guy really fast in the replay mode, you use ice eggs, because it just destroys him. As you're noticing in this fight, we're getting more cutscenes than actual fighting going on at this point. The cutscenes can't even keep up with how much damage I'm doing with King Cole, so... It's just a little too much. The guy can't handle his ice. But that's this fight in a nutshell. Very, very easy using his weakness. Now for our next fight here, we're gonna go ahead and fight Mr. Patch. Mr. Patch here is very interesting, mainly because of how you can fight him in general. So, when we encounter Mr. Patch the first time, we mainly fought him in the air, and that's simply because after you do one point of damage here to Mr. Patch, then you're going to have these molehills appear with boxing gloves coming out to hit Banjo-Kazooie every couple of seconds. So what you're supposed to do in this fight after the boxing gloves appear, is you're supposed to do the rest of this fight in the air. But you can still fight Mr. Patch here on the ground. It is definitely harder, but if you can do this, it is actually faster to hit all of these points on Mr. Patch on the ground instead of in the air. But again, this isn't the easiest thing to do, so I would recommend in this mode if you want a fast time, try to do a combination of on-ground and in-air fighting, because if you can get a lot of his patches destroyed before you go in the air, it'll make the air section so much easier on you. Because as you see now, he's already pretty small in the air, and we're just annihilating him with these grenade eggs. This is the fastest I have ever beat Mr. Patch, and I didn't even know this was possible. So that's this fight in a nutshell. A lot harder when you do this on the ground, but if you can fight him on the ground, it makes the air section so much easier. So our next fight here is against the fake Mumbo here in the game, Minji Jungo. So this fight is very interesting, mainly because of a stun lock that's in this fight. So you can skip dialogue in this fight, but I don't recommend skipping the dialogue when he's shutting the staircase, because you can get one attack out immediately, and then the other seven attacks to finish him off, you use Wonder Wing and just pin him in a corner, and he is just dead immediately. This boss fight is a joke when you stun lock him like this. This is insane, and I really wish I knew this as a kid. Because this would have made my fear of fighting this guy so much better. And now for the last boss I want to go ahead and show off here in this mode is we're going to go ahead and fight Lord Wu Fakback again. As for our first fight against Lord Wu Fakback, we actually came in here as the submarine, so we didn't actually fight him as Banjo-Kazooie. And the reason why we fought him as a submarine is because we had an infinite supply of ammo. With Banjo-Kazooie, we have a limited number of grenade eggs to worry about here, so this fight, in theory, is much harder as Banjo and Kazooie. But, there's actually a little bit of a trick that you can use in this fight when you're playing as Banjo-Kazooie here. So, to do damage to his little spots on the body, you have to use Grenade Eggs, but you can also use Kazooie's Torpedo ability to do damage to this guy as well. I did not know this for the longest time, and this is the easiest way actually to fight 
Lord Wu Fak back. Because Kazooie by herself in the water moves so quick, and she does not take any damage whatsoever. Another thing that's really interesting about using the torpedo ability here with Kazooie is that the hitbox on Lord Wu Fak back, they don't work properly for Kazooie by herself here. So you can just swim straight through his body, and you can't do this with Banjo-Kazooie or the submarine. So being able to swim straight through Lord Wu Fakpak's body makes this so much easier. And because I don't worry about taking any damage here with Kazooie by herself, I don't have to worry about dying nearly as much here. And this is good because in the replay mode, you are limited on your supplies, so you only have the base amount of eggs, and you only have 5 honeycombs to work with. So you have to be very careful about your health and your ammo management in these fights. And certain fights later on get a lot more difficult if you have not gone out of your way to collect more health in this game. So the fact that we can go ahead and use Kazooie by herself here and not worry about taking damage is a godsend for this fight. This fight is so much harder if you're just using grenade eggs because when you run out of these eggs, you have to stop what you're doing in this fight and go on the corners of the room because there's grenade eggs down on the floor and collect those to refill your ammo. So you have to be very careful about ammo management in this fight. You have to be watching all the different attacks Lord Wu Fak Fak does. And some of these attacks can blindside you, like the bubbles of his. The bubbles will entrap Banjo-Kazooie, and the only way to get out of those bubbles is just mash your controller. So once you're in a bubble like this, there's not much you can really do, and you're an easy target for Lord Wu Fak Fak's laser beam attack. So that's not really that easy for that reason. So... Use the torpedo ability as often as you possibly can in this fight. It really doesn't take up that much of your feathers. So I would just spam that any chance you get. And there you go. That's Lord Wu Fat Fact defeated. And I have now defeated every boss in this mode under 15 minutes. So now we got the Now Who's Boss Stop and Swap 2 achievement. So before we leave this mode, I want to show off the other stop and swap 2 achievement, which is called Heroic Failure. In order to get this, you must die 40 times, so the easiest way to do that is to challenge one of the chilies here. So I'm attacking Chili Willy, and I'm just going to go ahead and jump off this cliff 40 times. One eternity later. So there you go, we have died 40 times and we got Heroic Failure. This is kind of a weird one if you want to be honest, but we got it, so now we have all the Stop and Swap 2 achievements. So that's the boss rush mode here in Banjo-Tooie. So there's one more thing we can take a look at here in the replay options, and that's Cinema. Now this one is a little bit weird because this is where you can watch back certain cutscenes here in Banjo-Tooie, but you're going to notice there's a very small amount of cutscenes you can watch back in this mode. Simply being because these are the cutscenes that you can go ahead and skip, not have really any kind of interaction with in Banjo-Tooie. These aren't the cutscenes that you can walk up to someone and then press the B button to go ahead and talk to them. Those kind of cutscenes aren't featured here at all, so that's why we only have cutscenes like the opening when King Jingling dies, and then you get the very end of the game cutscenes when like bottles restore, Grunty dies, credits, all that stuff. So, these are kind of limiting for that reason, but, yeah, you can go ahead and say, you know, instead of starting up a new file to watch maybe when King Jingling gets zapped, you can just load it up here in the cinema mode and watch it here instead. I don't know why you'd want to do this, but it is an option. And as you can see here, in this cutscene, we just went to the beginning portion when it just say meanwhile and cut the cauldron keep. So certain portions of this cutscene technically aren't in the cinema mode because they are interactable styled cutscenes that you can still do something in with Banjo-Tooie engine-wise. These kind of cutscenes in cinema are all pre-rendered. And because of that, that's why there's such a limited amount of cutscenes in this option. So that's pretty much it for the replay mode here. I honestly say the bigger reason why you would use replay mode here is for both the minigames and the boss rush modes. I would not touch this for cinema as there's basically nothing here really to watch. So if you want to watch back the credits or something, then that's good for the cinema option. But the rest of it, I would just say play Banjo-Tooie and see these cutscenes there instead. 
So yeah, that is replay mode in a nutshell. So this little box here can be pretty fun, mainly for the bosses. I really enjoy fighting the bosses once again here, especially with the limited amount of items and health you have in Banjo-Tooie. But with that said, that's going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.